welcome to the nonprofit show. We are so glad you're here. It's another episode today, and we are so thrilled to have Derek Dreer with us. He's here from your part-time controller, where he serves as the department leader of government funding, and he's going to tell us more about that soon. He's here to talk to us about federal grant and application insights. So stay with us as we dive deep on this very sexy topic with you, Derek. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But before we jump into conversation, we want to remind all of you who we are. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet you yet, good morning or good afternoon to you, Julia. S Julia Patrick, CEO at the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jared Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. And sometimes Julia holds me hostage, or I should say right. Ransom, as her <laughs> own nonprofit nerd. <laughs> as her own nonprofit nerd, but there's, there's plenty of this nerdiness to go around. Um, and really glad to be here in conversation with you, Julia, as we have uh, this really deep dive here with Derek. We also want to let you know that we have some amazing presenting sponsors that keep this show going and flowing. So thank you to our besties over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, and nonprofit tech talk. Many of these companies have been with us from the very beginning. You see your part-time controller there. That's where Derek is joining us from. Thank you so much to Jennifer Oliva, one of the partners there that has been with us from the very beginning of the pandemic and literally bringing us breaking, breaking news. news. As, yeah, as we're broadcasting and it was typically on a Friday. So yeah. thank you, Jennifer, <laughs> and to the entire your part-time controller team. Hey, we've helped uh, or we have produced over 800 episodes thanks to the help of our sponsors. And you can scan the QR code right now to download the app. And that's uh, here on your smartphone. You can do that. And we have not left the other platform. So you can also find us on podcast as well as streaming broadcasts. So plenty of places to find the information that we provide here at the Nonprofit Show, all free. Again, thanks to our sponsors. So Derek, we are thrilled to have you. Again, for those of you watching and listening, we have Derek Dreer with us today. He's joining us from Philadelphia, if my memory is recalling, just like a 20-second okay, conversation. Again, where he serves as the department leader of the government funding at your part-time controller. Welcome to you, Derek. Thank you. I'm delighted to be with you today. I always enjoy this show. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. Okay. Derek, you said something that kind of like blew my mind uh, when we were getting going in the green room chatter, and that was the very distinct role that you play within YPTC. First of all, you are now in uh, in 49 states. We have one more state to get you into. We do, yes. Which we're going to do. But talk <laughs> to us about what the number of providers YPTC now harnesses and what you do within that whole ecosystem. Yeah, so uh, interestingly, I was a client of YPTC for many years, a long, long time ago. We won't say how long ago, but when it was a very small company, I managed a nonprofit for 25 years and YPTC has grown now to the point that it has clients in 49 states. We have 1,600 clients. We have over 600 staff members. And to your question, over 300 of those staff members are accountants. And one of their core capacities is helping their clients manage, report on, and steward grants of every kind, including federal grants, where you often have that complex single audit. It comes at the end. And that's not what I do. I don't have an accounting background. I have a background in art history. And I'm part of a new service. As you noted, our managing partner, Jenna Leva, announced it here first a couple of months ago. We have a new service to help our clients find and apply for federal funding. There's lots yeah. out there, but it's complicated. So I do that front end work. And then if one of our clients is lucky enough to get an award, we have we're fresh off a successful application last week, actually, then we can pass that off to our staff accountants and they can help our clients manage the award. So it's a, basically a 360 service now. We're helping our clients at the beginning and during and at the end. That is so fantastic. And I love that you referred to yourself. I had to write it down. 
find it and apply for it guy. And so I want to know, is, is that what your business card says? Because I think it should. <laughs> it, it should. You know, I started working during the pandemic, so I didn't actually get business cards yet, but they're they're in production now. I'm going to try and slow it down and add that little tagline if I can. Good. Good. I well, thank you, Derek. Let's let's dive right in. I'm really excited uh, to have this conversation. Let's start off by, if you would, share with us what do successful applicants look like. And again, for those of you watching and listening, this is really all around federal applications. So, what does the successful applicant look like? They can they can look lots of different ways. Of course, the federal government gave out over 56,000 grants last year, totaling over $20 billion. And this fiscal year, the government has already awarded some $7 billion in just in grants up to a million dollars to nonprofits. So the feds give away a lot of money to a lot of groups, but there really are some characteristics of your classic great applicant. And I think the most important one is that you have a hook. There's a compelling story you can tell why your organization, why your project, and why now? Because ultimately, the government gives away money to have a benefit to society. Right. We want to see an impact of some kind. Maybe you're helping more patients, you're serving more clients, you're doing something in such a good way that it can be replicated elsewhere. So they want to lift you up and support you. But again, if you can't tell a story of why me, why now, it's harder to convince the program officers. Another thing that I find is a common characteristic. You've existed for a couple of years already, so you've got a track record. You want to demonstrate to the feds you know how to manage money and implement programs. Your budget is its kind of a Goldilocks thing. It's not going to be too small, but it's probably also not going to be too big. I find the sweet spot for a lot of our clients is between, say, half a million and then up to 5, 10, 20 million in annual budget. Now, you can get grants when you're smaller, but if you're too small, there's a worry on the side of the federal government. You won't have the wherewithal to implement the program and manage the monies. Sure. It also helps to be a 501c3, not a requirement, but just numerically, most of the grants out there are for 501c3. So if you're a 501c6, you manage an association, for example, your choices are a little more limited. Yeah. And of course, I love, also, I was going to say, I love the Goldilocks analogy. You know, it's like, this might be too small. This one might be too large, but right here in the middle, that's, that's just right. <laughs> that's where, that's where most of the grants are. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's absolutely true. And of course, there are exceptions to all of these rules, but sure. we're not here to talk about exceptions. <laughs> yeah. One of the main things to keep in mind is as a client, you are not in a rush because the federal government provides wonderful, wonderful support, but they don't do it quickly. So if you're in a rush, you're not looking to the federal government. Interesting. That, you know, that was the case yeah. during the pandemic with all kinds of emergency programs, but it's not mm -hmm. the case now. And finally, we don't want any red flags. If you've got chronic series of deficits. If you have a leadership transition in progress and let's say the executive director just left and the search hasn't even begun yet for your successor, it's gonna be hard to convince a federal agency that they should trust you with money right now. So you wanna think about the right timing for your grant as well. Yeah, timing's important. Well, let's talk about um, even more determination of if we're ready, right? So you had mentioned, you know, we definitely want a track record. We want to have some audits behind us. What are some other determinants of readiness? Yeah, the, and the track record, it's not just a question of, oh, we've existed for a minimum of three years. It's not about the, the time per se. It's about, a, a, there's a two, two kinds of track records. One is a track record for creating and implementing programs that have impact. Again, whether you're feeding the homeless, creating exhibitions, doing medical research, whatever you do, you do it well, and your track record shows that. You also have an audit track record. For some agencies, you can't even apply unless you fill in the numbers on certain lines of your audit or your 990 tax forms that go back three years. So if you were just created and you don't have three years of 990s or audits yet, best to wait. Build that track record and then come back. But another important thing is your staff has the wherewithal 
to implement a program. So the federal government feels like we can trust this organization. They're gonna manage the money well, they're gonna do what they say they do, and ultimately they're gonna have a benefit to society. That's what the government wants. So if you've got all of that wherewithal and that track record, it's time for you to think about applying. Derek, let me ask you this qu this question just popped into my head. So many of our nonprofits, you know, 1.8 million nonprofits that have their letters of determination from the IRS across this country, but there's a growing number of small nonprofits and sometimes growing nonprofits that are fiscally sponsored. How does that fit into the mix? Is that a, somebody that would be a candidate for this or really should they be out from under that type of stewardship? They can be, but it's definitely a hurdle you'll need to clear. Typically, organizations that have a fiscal sponsor have that because they're very, very small. Mm -hmm. If your annual budget is $50,000 or $75,000 or even $100,000, it probably doesn't make sense for you to seek, say, a $200,000 grant from the federal government. Mm -hmm. They're not going to trust that you'll be able to implement that properly. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply. There are many programs at the federal level for smaller grants with streamlined applications. And there's no reason small organizations that are doing good work shouldn't apply just because they have a fiscal sponsor. Wow, Fa that's great a fat Jared. Don't you think that's a fascinating thing to think about? Yeah, it is, and that's that's a great question. I love that you asked that. You know, I I've written a few in my career. Um, I prefer not to, if I'm being completely honest. Right? It is it is a project in and of itself. Right? Like it it's I think it's cumbersome. There's a lot of eyes to dot. There's a lot of T's to cross. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces, you know, when it comes to this. So, so making sure that we, we can, you know, adhere to the requirements, first of all, and then what you said, Derek, right? Like the program staff as well, like the execution of this is equally as important as what we put down on paper or digital format <laughs> to That's apply. That's correct. My accountant colleagues are fond of telling organizations that are celebrating because they just got a grant award and they're thinking, yay, all our work is over. No, actually, the hard work is just beginning. Right. That's right. You need to implement yeah. the program you said you would, and you're going to need to track everything you do very, very carefully. You want to be ready at the beginning to sit, submit those interim and final narrative and financial reports. If you're going to have an audit, you want to make sure you know in advance what you'll need to report on. That's right. And, yeah, and would possibly. you mind, yeah, would you mind telling us that threshold for the single file audit? It's uh, $750,000. It gets expended in one fiscal year. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. as always, there are some exceptions to that, but there are a lot of nonprofits that either have several federal grants or they have a large federal grant and they hit that threshold. You must file the single audit. And yeah. You, must. you were saying, Jared, you don't like writing grants. I love writing grants. I, I love sitting down and writing, but I can't stand the thought of preparing a single audit. So I'm glad I get to hand that part off <laughs> to my colleagues. Else. Well, then you're in good company there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so give us the skinny on grants.gov. How do we harness the power of this platform? And again, grants.gov. What, what are the such intricacies? It's a wonderful website. It's the government's official website where all 26 federal agencies that give grants announce their grants. Wow. It's updated daily. I've, of course, I visit it every day. That's where I live. And as of this <laughs> morning, I can tell you there were 2,756 active grants listed on grants.gov wow. and that's actually a wonderful thing and a horrible thing all at once because <laughs> it's wonderful that there's so much there there's something for almost anyone yeah but it's also bewildering and i hear yeah. so many complaints about grants.gov and i think one of the problems people have is that it's there's just so much information there they don't know where to start yeah. i was at a conference last week and i was hearing people complaining about how you one person said, oh, you need three different passwords for grants.gov. No, you don't. <laughs> there are a lot of misconceptions about it, but what you wanna do is take some time and browse over to grants.gov. You don't need to have an account to browse. 
you don't. Now, when you open the website, you will get a little dialog box will pop up that will say you need an account but you don't actually have to log into browse. So get started and you're gonna find all kinds of ways to narrow your search. You can narrow by agency. Maybe I only wanna hear about Department of State grants or the Institute of Museum and Library Services. You can narrow by type of recipient. So I can say, hey, I'm a 501c6, not a 501c3, what do you have for me? Right. There are also ways to include or exclude actual posted grants as opposed to forecasted grants. So forecasted, let's wait until they get posted, right? Let's just take those off the top right away. When you start to use all of these different ways of narrowing down your search, then the most powerful one, it's kind of the most obvious, there's a keyword search field. You can enter any keyword you like so no matter what your organization does, you're serving the homeless, you're supporting journalism, medical research, millions of possibilities among our millions of nonprofits, right? Put in the keywords you care about most and you're gonna zero in very quickly. And that is when you want to sign up for a grants.gov account because if you've gone to the trouble to set up a complicated search, you can save it when you have an account. And then you're going to hear about, you'll be, you'll be able to log in easily. These are dynamic searches. So it might change from day to day or week to week. You'll see three grants one time and five the next and two the next. You can always figure out what's newest and learn about it and just zero in right away. Another great advantage to getting that account on grants.gov is you can sign up for updates for mm -hmm. grants that interest you. Sometimes the deadlines change. Sometimes the rules change. Sometimes wow. the amounts change and you don't want to be spending three, four weeks working on your narrative and then learn, whoops, the deadline got moved up the last week. And now I can't submit. So again, the government gets a bad rap for having a complicated website, but I think probably the worst thing about it is also the best thing about it. There are just so many grants available on it. So create your account. It takes a couple of steps, but it's actually very simple. And Derek, as you talk about this, it reminds me of the Cheesecake Factory menu, right? Where there's so many choices <laughs> to pick from. Where do you I'm, start? I know. I'm curious. Would you recommend, and you're in the daily, and I, and I get that because you're the find it and apply for it guy. That's me. For those of us, yeah, that we're managing, and, and I know you're managing other things as well. How often do you recommend we check the portal, the grants.gov uh, portal? Is this a weekly occurrence, a bi-monthly? What's your recommendation there? So ideally, you're going to set up that account and you're going to set up some searches and request updates on, on the couple of grants that interest you most. Let's face it, most organizations are not going to apply for dozens and dozens of grants. There are probably two, three, maybe even four or five grants. But for some, it's just one grant they want to apply for. And these tend to get renewed annually. Some grants are announced at the same time each year by the agency. For, for example, Institute of Museum and Library Services, almost all its deadlines are November 15. But the State Department has deadlines every week. It mm. issues hundreds of grants. And Health and Human Services has thousands of grants. There are deadlines every day. You don't want to go in there daily unless you're me. <laughs> so if you set up that account and get those updates, it's kind of a set it and forget it thing. Unless you're, you might be a development director, and then I would expect you're in there more often poking around to see if something new has been announced. And another tip I would have something again that's easy and free if there's a federal agency that seems like a likely funder to you go to their website and sign up to get their newsletters their email blasts whatever way they have of keeping in touch again 26 federal agencies I can tell you from experience 25 of them will send out email newsletters to tell you what's going on and I get dozens of email newsletters every day so small business administration I'm wagging a finger at you for not having an email newsletter. <laughs> Serve your public. But the rest of them do a great job. And then you don't need to go to grants.gov constantly. But don't fear it. Yeah. Ironically, the SBA is our guest tomorrow. So we'll make sure to tell them. Oh, good. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're not. They're not, Derek. I'll, but I, I'll I do expect them to have a newsletter by the end of the week. Or, or maybe they already do. And I just haven't checked recently. <laughs> I love it. They, they were the one holdout recently. 
I love it. Yeah. Well, tell us about the top do's and don'ts when it comes to the grant applications. Um, what are the things that we need to consider and what are the things that we need to like make sure, again, back to those dotting our I's and crossing our T's. What is the list of these? Yeah, I'm going to start with the don'ts because it's always best to get the negatives out of the way first. And a couple of those okay. have to do with the timing of your work. The first is don't wait to register. When you're going to apply for a grant, it's not enough to be registered with grants.gov. You're actually going to start by organizing, excuse me, by registering your organization with SAM.gov, the system for award management. Interesting. So your organization registers with SAM.gov. SAM.gov has introduced a new process called validation. They will validate that the address you type in is in fact your physical address. This can take a few minutes if you're lucky. It can also take two weeks. There are a lot of organizations that got founded. They used the address, say, of their law firm or their fiscal sponsor, but now they're located at their own building somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's not going to match up on the federal side. So that can take a long time. So register well in advance. Never leave it to the last minute. Okay, good advice. Once your organization is set with SAM.gov, you can sign up as an individual for grants.gov. Do that as soon as you're starting to think about grants. And then when you find a grant you think is a good one, don't wait to start your application. They can literally take three to four weeks of time, very intensive time. As Jared said, you have to dot the I's and cross the T's. And even if you're super organized, you may be relying on colleagues or partners outside your organization for other bits of information. Maybe you collaborated with a local feeder or a local homeless shelter. You need some numbers from them. Well, don't call them at 11 p.m. the day the grant is due. Reach out immediately. Start working on this stuff now. And then don't wait to submit once your application is done. Many of these grants are due at midnight on a given day. What if your website collapses? What if you lose internet or lose power or any other thing happens? Well, the federal government is not going to give you an extension. Mm -hmm. So set yourself a deadline that's a couple days in advance, and then you have that buffer time. That's what I always do, and I've never regretted it. I and love then, that for time, Derek. And I also would tell my team the buffer time, but I didn't tell them it was buffer. I was like, this is the deadline, exactly, <laughs> right? Exactly. And so it, it just kind of baked in I, that. I do, uh, I do that with my clients as well. And I, and, and, and now the secret's out because probably some of them are I know, watching, and now they it's know. It's important to do. It benefits everybody in the end. Another yeah. don't, don't submit things the agency didn't ask for. If they ask you for a narrative and a budget and a staff list and nothing else, don't decide to upload your recent annual report. Don't decide to upload a summary of your strategic plan. Give them only what they want. Otherwise you might get rejected. And the converse is also true. If they ask for something, don't think to yourself that that's optional. Give them exactly what they want. Don't request monies to support activities the federal government won't allow. This is a big no-no. It happens all the time. A lot of agencies make it clear, for example, that they won't support food and meals in most circumstances, and certainly not alcohol at those meals. Mm -hmm. We had a client once. They had a wonderful program where they had decided to invite a Supreme Court justice, and the justice gave a wonderful talk. Everyone said it was a great program. And then they took the justice to dinner and the justice ordered a glass of wine. Well, nothing wrong with that, right? Except they sent the bill for that to the federal government. And that case almost went to the Supreme Court itself. Yeah. Oh, Read wow. the fine print carefully. If the government says they won't pay for it, don't ask for it. Don't decide to be a maverick and do things a different way. Do it exactly the way they want. Now we're going to get into the do's. do's. The the government asks questions and they will often ask very specific questions and they'll usually tell you how they're going to evaluate the answers. Make sure you have answered all the questions thoroughly, clearly and thoroughly. Do reach out to the program officer. I often hear from clients, I'm scared to talk to someone at the government or I don't wanna call the government. 
program officers at every agency are there to help you and make your job easier. You can run an idea by them and they might green light it or they might tell you it's not gonna work. Go to them with questions and there's a wonderful add-on effect. They're gonna make notes about the fact that you called to ask questions. And when they come to the review time a few months later, they'll say, oh, why yes, Derek was in touch with us three times and, and we had a chance to weigh in on this project as it developed and we really like it. Yeah. yeah. So do you recommend, Derek, that we always find an opportunity to reach out to the contact? I do. Good. Okay. I do. They're, they are paid to help you and they yeah. actually all enjoy their jobs a lot. They love talking with their constituents and they can give you insights on any specific initiative you might be interested in applying to. And those are always very, very useful. Cool. And we already talked about how you're gonna sign up for updates on grants.gov. That's on my do list as well, but I'll say it again. <laughs> as your writing proceeds, do have someone else proofread everything. It, your eyes can just go cross-eyed after a short time. And if you've been working at a document for hours and hours, there are bound to be mistakes in there. You might have used jargon that you understand, but no one else does. Mm -hmm. Ask someone with fresh eyes to have a look at it. Yeah. Also ask that someone to make sure that your budget and your narrative tie out. How many times have I seen people say in one place that they're asking for $200,000, but in the yeah. other, they talk about 250. <laughs> well, which is it? Right. This should right. tie out perfectly. Yeah. Verify that you're actually eligible before you apply. There are a lot of grants that get announced and they say eligible, um, eligible applicants include 501c3s and others. Don't assume other is an open category that anybody can just jump into. You need to look at the fine print. Other might be restricted literally to a specific organization or a specific type. So read the fine print, but especially make sure you are eligible to apply and then Good luck doing your writing. It's worth all of this trouble and effort because you have the chance to bring in a big piece of the enormous federal pie to lift up your programs and make your nonprofit stronger. You know, I have loved so many of the things that you said. I think that they're natural, um, they're logical. Um, in, in some ways, a lot of what you've said actually gives me greater confidence um, about working with the federal government and that these are, you know, prescribed processes that are open and, and um, methodically managed. And so, Derek, this has really been a cool opportunity for us to, to really get a, a new look at what this work can be like for us. Um, department leader, government funding, wow, that's just a title that really uh, we're thrilled it got announced on the nonprofit show, of course, but we need to have more discussions about this because there's, Jared, don't you think there's just such a mystery around this and fear? There's a lot of mystery, yeah, and there's a lot of finer points. I didn't want to get lost in the weeds today, but the, the message overall is it really is worth the trouble for most applicants. Yeah. Well, well, we'll have you back on, Derek, and that topic will be lost in the weeds with federal applications. <laughs> I love it. Uh, no, it's, I'll be it's back really been insightful. Yeah, thank you so very much. And, and thank you uh, for all of you that joined Julia Patrick and myself, Jarrett Ransom, today. Really glad to have you here. Uh, federal, federal applications is definitely something that, you know, is kind of this, you know, mystique unicorn, if you will, out, out somewhere in the jungle, but we need to know a little bit more about it. And so glad that you're here to share that with us. We want to thank our presenting sponsors. Thank you so very much to our friends at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, where Derek Dreer joined us from, Nonprofit Thought Leader Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Please check out these companies. They're here to help you. Uh, they're really good people. Their mission is your mission and they wanna help you do more good. Absolutely. You know, uh, it's a, a really amazing time for the nonprofit sector and we are so thrilled to be in partnership with so many folks helping to uh, let all of us navigate the system. Derek, this has been a great conversation and I agree, Jared, we need to keep moving forward on this because 
um, this is where the rubber meets the road for so many of our organizations. So as we like well, to thanks end- Thanks for every... having me and thanks oh. for everything you do. Oh my gosh, Derek, it's been a lot of fun. Really, I learned a lot and you've really got those wheels turning. Um, I know we're gonna have even more questions for you. As we end every episode, we like to remind ourselves, our viewers, our nonprofits in search of grants to stay well so you can do well. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.